confidence when you're facing an opponent is everything. They can smell it. Like a guy like me, if you're if you're in front of me and I can smell, I can smell the fear. So I'm saying, middleweights, I'm the new dog in the yard, and I just f all over this cage. Confidence in yourself, in your ability, in your skill set, in your spirit. You have to have that. If not, you don't belong here. How do you get it? How do you get this level of championship confidence in your everyday life so that you can go out there and be great in your world and be a champion in your life and conquer your dreams and turn them into reality? Well, we're going to take a look at some life changing principles from Israel Adesanya that can transform your circumstances and build true confidence in yourself. If you're unfamiliar with Israel, the last style bender Adesonia, he is the UFC middleweight champion of the world. Still the undisputed UFC middleweight champion of the world, Israel, the last style bender Adesonia. With a record of 20 and 0, undefeated and he is moving up to light heavyweight to fight for the championship belt in the upcoming weeks so what does it take for someone to have this level of confidence in themselves when few others believe in them i call this championship level confidence although confidence is something that's internal it definitely has external cues so we're going to take a look today at exactly what it takes to build confidence Starting with this first principle, affirm yourself. I think, like I said, UFC 90, I watched the Silver fight Patrick Cote, and I felt like, man, you know, if he can do this, because that was the first time I watched him fight live, but before that it was all DVDs. So I felt like if, if he could do that to Patrick Cote, I, for whatever reason, I just felt like I could, I think it was fight number four, I felt like I could be the best in the world from fight number four. I just knew, I was like, you know what, if I really wanted to do this, I'd be the best at this. and. I didn't know if it was true. Quote from Ali makes sense to me now. Like, I'm the greatest. I said it before I knew I was. And I was saying it way back then, but didn't care if people believe me or not. I just said it because it made me feel great. It's all about how you see yourself. What anyone else thinks. Sometimes if you ever feel, you know, down, sometimes you look at yourself and you give yourself positive affirmations. That was something I used to do every morning. Um, but also therapy. After my first UFC fight, like straight after I got home, I was like, hmm, I need to go see someone about this. Cause, no way, really? Yeah. I mean, like, think about it like coffee. You know, if you drink coffee, right, mm -hmm. you get a, a coffee high and then you crash. So it's like after my first UFC fight, UFC 221 in Perth, it was just a lot of stimulus, a lot of people coming at you. And then when I was finally home alone with my own thoughts, I was just... Like, it was like a crash. It was like, I was sad. And I was sad for like a week. And I was like, why am I sad? I just made my UFC debut in spectacular fashion, made mm -hmm. 50K bonus. Mm -hmm. and I realized this isn't really normal. So I sought the help that I needed to help me adjust to the life. We speak about words of affirmation a lot on this channel, but I think it bears repeating and diving deeper yet again, especially in the context of confidence. Also, Izzy takes it a step further with not just in words, but in therapy, which I think is so important because a healthy mind is capable of anything. You know, daily positive words of affirmation may be enough for you, but if it's not, maybe you can seek professional help and unlock the positive attitude in you. I know therapy has a negative connotation at times, but let's normalize positive, healthy thinking because your success is totally dependent on your mindset and the way you think which leads us to principle number two visualization built myself into an entertainer but like i came here last night i rehearsed that with my boys like four or five times and then i did the whole walk through to the cage i visualized everything like i said and i made sure i got it done and while i was doing it and when it happened i just felt like damn deja vu like honestly just felt like deja vu even backstage when i was getting ready i was like should I be this calm? No nerves, nothing. Normally I like a little bit of nerves, but I could feel the chakra building up and I like, it was just getting pushed like down easier. And I was like, okay, all right, let's go. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, like a professional, like I've been doing this for so long in my head, like now I'm making a reality. I'm creating my own reality. So how do you feel like you handled the situation inside the octagon with Derek? I mean, I've heard you say that you'd like to finish him in the second round, but I, how do you see it actually going down in your head? 
three ways. Um, for me, it's about my striking and his chin. With the way I strike, I'm very accurate. I'm uh, probably one of the most accurate in the middleweight division. Significant strikes, landing at a better rate, certainly backed up that confidence. I want it to be second round because I want to I want to feel him. I really want to look at, like across the cage, see his eyes, and then he'll realize. I, I know that look. I've seen it many times, and then they break it like, oh, shit. And they come out and like, oh, man, what do I do? Shoot for a takedown. Panic. Strike, and oh, shit. what am I going to do? And they're ready to go. And then uh, escort them out. But. Brunson is down. Adesanya with another knee. Brunson smiles. It. Oh. 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 oh, he's hurt, again. man. Visualization is the act of replaying something over and over again and working through all the possible scenarios. And this is such a powerful tool because the brain responds and internalizes it to the point where once the moment actually comes, your response is second nature. But with visualizing different situations, you have to get out and practice different situations. That's when you maximize your opportunity. When you visualize, practice, repeat, you are setting yourself up to succeed, but also you'll be confident and you'll be ready for whatever comes your way. Now this is the ideal circumstance for fighters, but it translates to your life just the same. What do you have, a big presentation coming up? An interview? You name it. Visualize, practice, repeat, and watch the amount of confidence you exude, which leads us to the final principle understand the situation you're in fifth round it was just like i remember uh, for me i just knew i had to go to that place and that's what my coach said go to that place embrace the darkness go numb and i looked across the cage from him and i said you'll never beat me i'm willing to die like i was and i meant that like if this is how i go out this is how i go out oh my God. and i uh dude i put lead foot down a uh, foot on the pedal and even when i watched the fight again when i watched the fight again i get sweaty palms my heart's racing mm. I feel the emotions, and I was surprised, like the pace I put after doing what I did for already what, 20 minutes, the pace I put on him in that fifth round, that's some shit that, I don't want to toot my own horn, but man, that's legendary shit. Once you affirm yourself, then visualize, practice, repeat, you'll clearly understand the situation you're in. You'll understand that it's you that's in control of your fate and not anyone else. Whatever you want to accomplish is 100% yours. I use these same principles to create and promote this video. And I have a feeling that if you're watching this, it may have worked out just as I imagined it. But I have a little bit more to show you from Izzy that fully displays these principles. Watch as he essentially predicts his career path with confidence. Whatever I want. I want to see how everyone else does, you know, like Weidman, Jacare, Branch, and the other guy. So see how they do with their fights. I'm pretty much, uh, I look at putting this guy away spectacularly in flying colors. And then I want to see how Bobby Knuckles does with Kelvin Gastelum. So I really want that. I want that fight in, in uh, New Zealand and Auckland. I want, I want to take the strap away from him at home. See, he does just that. He goes on to beat Gastelum for the interim championship. Then he goes on to beat Robert Whitaker in Auckland, New Zealand. He beat Joel Romero, Paul Acosta. I mean, my man visualized his entire career and it's playing out just the way he wanted it to. And here we are in 2021 where he predicted that he was gonna move up and wait as well and fight John Jones by the end of this year. Now, will that happen? We'll see. But thank you guys for watching this week's episode of Culture Breakdown. My name is Jamal Nola. I do this every single week. And if you're still here, see you next week. I appreciate you like, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, I'm out.